Welcome to Navigate, Session 3. Have you ever had a situation where someone's behavior didn't make sense to you? Why did they do that? Why did they take that action? I just don't understand. Or you've been in a communication you know, exchange and you say A, you're having them say something back to you that they heard and they say B and you're like, I said A and they're like, you know, you said B. So we, we look at behavior we don't understand. We look at miscommunications. And that's why this common wisdom is there that says understand before being understood. Seek to understand before seeking to be understood. Great. That's great wisdom. But here's the problem. As we learn to lead ourselves first so that we can lead others well, I can't really understand you if I don't understand myself. So I need to build a foundation of self-understanding. We want to seek self-understanding so that we can lead ourselves well. The best way I know to do that as we progress on this journey is to get aware of the fact that there is a movie playing in your head. The movie that's playing in your head is not the movie that's playing in the heads of others. That's why their behavior or actions don't make sense to you. If you knew their movie, their actions or behavior would make sense. That's why miscommunications occur. If you knew their movie, right, you would see that the what they're reading from as a script would would unblock your understanding. So we got to start with ourselves first. How are we going to do that? I want to walk you through three actions so that you can get to a deeper understanding about the movie playing in your head, self-understanding. And if you're advanced on these path, on this pathway, these actions are going to take you even further. If you're a beginner, they're going to help you get started wherever you find yourself. Number one, we want to unveil the composition, unveil the composition. What makes up the movie in our head, first and foremost, it's the script, it's the dialogue, it's the lines, it's the voice or voices. And the way that I think about this is there's the voice that we're projecting out to others that we're so unaware of. So that's why we started this journey like we're in a car just to notice the windshield. And as we notice the windshield, we see the thoughts and emotions that we have. We don't have to deny them as so many high performing leaders do, nor do we have to be dominated by them. So we're not going to be defined. We just, by these thoughts or emotions, we just notice them. We see them. And as we look at the windshield and see all our thoughts and emotions, I said, the next thing that I wanted you to do in session two was construct this antenna. This antenna has one job to notice where you prove or hide. As you notice where you prove or hide, this starts to increase your understanding about yourself, your self-understanding as you see themes start to emerge. And as you see themes start to emerge, you can start to peel back the dialogue and make sense of the lines. Here's what I mean. I was pulling in the driveway a few days ago. Now, two people across the yard or across the road spend tons of time in their yards, like caring for their yards a lot. I don't. Actually, I have professionals who come up to the house and take care of that. They do that. I can't ever do it at their level. Now, they spend a ton of time in their yard. The guys that come do my yard do it like, I mean, it's it's so fast. I don't want to calculate the money. <laughs> it's like they're in and out. Where are they going? But I was pulling the driveway and I was like, oh my gosh, my yard looks so much better than their yard. And they're spending all this time on it. Now, that will make sense to you if the movie playing in your head isn't like the movie playing in my head, which is about performance, achieving, wanting to win, wanting to be the best. My behavior won't make sense to you because the movie playing in my head is different than the movie playing in your head. But as I start to unveil the composition, I start to look at the thoughts and emotions I'm having in the windshield. I, with the antenna, I start to notice the proving or hiding. And as I start to notice the proving or hiding, I realize this, a ton of the composition, a ton of the dialogue, a ton of the lines are about me trying to convince myself or others of something, or I'm hiding away from my truth and my honesty and what I'm really feeling or sensing. What happens for us over and over when we start to get this big picture view and unveil the composition, we see there is a theme at work. There's a theme at work in the movie of our our lives, the story that's playing out in us. And so we've gone deep with introspection in these first two sessions to start to peel back and realize, oh my gosh, I have something happening in me that's driving me to try to convince others of something or to draw back, diminish, and pull away. Like my yard is better. So first thing that I'm doing is I'm unveiling the comp composition. And as I unveil the composition, what's really transformative is I start to realize, oh, 
the movie that's playing in my head isn't necessarily real. So if somebody gives me feedback on something or critiques me, or maybe my wife is making a comment to me about something, I think it's an attack, but it's not really an attack. She's actually just expressing or communicating something important to her. We do this all the time. We read into other people's motives. We read in things they're not really saying. So we don't make sense to each other in our behaviors and actions. And we miscommunicate. Why? Because the movie playing in their head is different than the movie playing in my head. Now, as this starts to sink in and you grab a hold of this reality, you see this compositional theme start to develop. You see the dialogue is around what we call an identity fear. And we're going to go deeper in this in another section. But right now, just introducing this to you, what most people don't realize is they've tied an identity to some way of showing up or being in the world. There's a term in psychology called identity foreclosure. In other words, they've locked in an identity way too early into a specific role, into a specific relationship, and that defines all of who they are. So this is why we need to go to step two, not only unveil the composition, but understand the character. Understand the character. You're the character. And a boring movie does not have character development in it. There's no choices. There's no being made better or worse as their values are challenged. And you and I as leaders, we can't lead others well till we lead ourselves well first. Leading ourselves well first, we continually face challenges where we know we're going to be tested. And we're either going to future-proof our resiliency as we get ready for those tests, or we're going to get in the moment of those tests and crumble. So I want you to start to think about the character arc of who you are and who you're becoming, how you show up, how you lead. It's really difficult to see yourself and and even more difficult, I think, to, to see yourself when you've got a lot of embedded patterns. So if you were able to watch yourself on a movie, you would see some things and go, oh my gosh, those dots connect so clear. Much like as it's been these strange times. I've been working out in my basement the last year and I was feeling really good about myself. And I went to a work trip and I was working out in the hotel weight room. And I've got this little mirror that I can use here at in the basement, but now I'm surrounded by mirrors. And let's just say I'm way more fit at my home basement than that hotel weight room. <laughs> It was it was a, a reminder. There's still a long way to go, Chris. There's still some transformation to see happen. And it's so difficult to really understand the character of who you are, to see yourself and let that mirror view come back to you. Why? Well, because so much of who we think we are is really our personality. It's the insecurities that we developed pre-verbal, and we developed a personality around uh, these insecurities so that we could protect ourselves, so that we could power up or so that we could diminish and hide. True beingness is so rare. This has been confirmed in the research. Robert Keegan, the adult development specialist at Harvard, has shown us very few adults learn to live out of an authentic identity, who they are, separate from others. Now, we can be deeply connected to others, but we need to know who we are in ourselves, and then we can learn a fuller expression of who we are in being connected to others. Most people never experience this. They actually build their identity, how they show up in roles and relationships. And this is what's so dangerous about leadership. If you don't ever understand the character of who you are, you as a leader will need people to respond a certain way so you can feel whole. And this sets you up for so much failure. We are at our core, we, we have an identity, that is ours to discover, we are at our core a character of truth. And understanding that true character takes time. And so as you start to peel back the layers, you see the composition, you see the character, you understand it. This takes us to how you're really going to get this awareness dialed in the third action, unleash the conflict. See, a great movie moves forward in sequences of the conflict, the struggle. A key word is desire. Terrible editing on a movie shows you things you could figure out for yourself. Great editing is taking you on this surprise journey. And your life as a leader is a surprise journey. You are in a place where you're facing conflict. And what we don't understand for ourselves, first and foremost, is we don't have to be afraid of our desires, of what we want. It's our desires that get us started in motivation. Our desires get us started in vision. Wherever you're bothered is a great place to start with a vision of who you're becoming. And so as you unleash the conflict, another way to say this would be release the leash of desire. It's like desire is 
this leashed pet that you have that is ready to be there and connect to you and 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 love you and play with you and have a blast with you and watch out for you but you got this pet leashed up your desires have to be unleashed you know one of the ways you can recognize your desires aren't unleashed is addictions addictions show up because we're trying to quiet and numb our desires but when you're in a place of actually letting these desires amplify and get activated there's no boring scenes. Yes, you might be in the leadership rhythms and routines where there's mundane things you're doing and fulfilling. But when you look at the character arc of who you're becoming, you look at your life in terms of what are the challenges I've faced this quarter, this year, the last five years? What are the top hurts in my life? What are the top hurts in the last five years, 10 years, whatever? All of those things start to show us this story that's unfolding. And I'm going to give you the best way of thinking about how you can use this journey that we're talking about in being in a car and start to discover something about yourself. Rene Girard said we're mimetic beings. It's hard to know what we really want because we're copying others. I want you to think about when you're on a car ride and you've gone on this drive and you've been relaxing into the flow of that ride in such a way that your mind starts to wander. You start to daydream. And, and when you're daydreaming, we know this, as the mind is imagining the future, neurons are firing, it's like it's actually happening. And I want you to imagine the kind of daydreaming that isn't about escaping pain, that isn't about escaping some challenging circumstance. And I get that. And sometimes we're in those places. I want you to imagine more like a child who out of true desire, every need is met, daydreams are coming out of them. And I know it may be difficult for some of you. I mean, go back to the last time in your mind's eye that you can, that you felt safe or loved or peaceful or taken care of, or that everything around you that you needed was just right there at arm's reach, or a, a place that you could fit in and know your place in the world because of your place in this group, whatever it looks like, go back to that like a child. And as you're in the car and you're relaxed and you have all that you need, and we're just imagining that for now, as you're in this car, where do your daydreams go? Where, where does desire show up for you? Because as you unveil the composition and start to see the real script that's happening and you understand the character arc of who you're becoming and you unleash the conflict and you start to see where your desires may not match your current circumstances, you're starting to get a clue and a signal about who you are and what you really want. We're going to go much deeper on this. Note those daydreams. <laughs>